Right, good afternoon. Uh, call to order. Uh, the responsibility of this board is to carry out locally the Commonwealth policy to preserve the wetlands and to accommodate economic activity so as to prevent their despoliation. Have a roll call, please. Mr. Roadley. Here. Mr. O'Brien. Here. Mr. Gussman. Here. Mr. Lukens. Here. Mr. Dunn. Here. Everyone's had an opportunity to uh, review the minutes from the last meeting. Any additions, changes? All right, the minutes are accepted. Uh, we have no public hearings tonight, and there are no board considerations. Uh, there's one matter of spe special privilege for York, York River State Park. Living Shoreline Project Update. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Joe Parfit, and I uh, work for VDOT and in the TMDL section of uh, the Environmental Division. And um, we are currently working at York River State Park doing a shoreline stabilization. Is this my clicker here? Cool. So you guys know where York River State Park is, but here's um, a uh, location for you. Um, we are working specifically at Fossil Beach. I don't know if you guys are all familiar with that, but it's, um, say about that, Fossil Beach is a, a popular place to go look for fossils. Uh, families go down to the beach, but it has some high eroding banks. So, um. We get this question a lot. Why is VDOT working uh, on a state park? Well, um, I'm not. Sh I'm sure everyone's familiar with the TMDL program uh, that uh, VDOT is under related to the MS4 permit, but um, we've been working all over the state um, doing projects, uh, stream restorations, planting forests, other things, but we. Uh, you know, expanded into um, some other areas and looked uh, at some other opportunities and worked with Stantec. Uh, I've got with me tonight Daniel Proctor from Stantec. We have several contracts with them and um, looked towards some uh, other sister agencies like uh, DGIF, now DWR, and uh, DCR, among others. We ended up um, making an, uh, an MOA agreement with the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Um, you know, they had, uh, they had some projects that needed to be done or that they wanted to have done, and we had um, the, the need for the uh, sediment, nutrient, uh, you know, phosphorus, and uh, nitrogen reductions. Another part of this equation is another agency that was involved as well, DEQ, um, agreed, you know, we brought them to the table as well and they agreed that we could do this. You know, we could work outside of our right away and facilities and, you know, claim those credits because uh, DCR not having uh, any or if any, they don't have many MS4 areas, uh, they don't need the credits. So. They, they had the needs, we had the money, so it uh, turned into, we like to call it a little love affair. So we, um, so we did lots of screenings of lots of different areas of potential and uh, identified several, including Belle Isle State Park, Westmoreland, and York River State Park was particularly of interest. Um, there, um, worked closely with the park and ended up at uh, Fossil Beach. The reason that we're at Fossil Beach, um, <clears throat> like I said, is you know we're we're doing a stabilization project, um, you know, protecting the banks uh, by halting erosion, uh, working with the park closely to provide educational opportunities. There's going to be some signage and other. Um, uh, the, the park has interpretive. Um, staff and uh, we're going to some verbiage and you know, some signs and 
that. Um, we are, because it's a popular family destination, we are maintaining beach access. And um, like I mentioned on the last slide, we need to <clears throat> maintain, oh, excuse me, reduce the nutrient inputs into the Chesapeake Bay, you know, as, as required by our individual permit um, stated on the slide there. You know, so some of these banks are up to 30 feet in height. Um, so we're, we're, you know, stuff uh, to, to reduce the wave energy. Um, and uh, part of that is we're uh, protecting some of the marsh habitat that's there and increasing the marsh habitat by, by planting uh, marsh habitat planting additional plants uh, after we fill in behind the breakwaters um, with nourishment and, and other plants. It's just, uh, you know, we'll increase the marsh habitat and we'll stop so much of the sediment and nutrients from going into the river. <clears throat> As you can see in this slide, uh, which shows uh, this is some VIMS data that we were working with when we were looking at the rates of erosion that were happening there. That red line um, shows the location of the shoreline in 1937. And if you look at 1937 to 2009, uh, it was at 1.85 feet per year uh, loss. And from 2009 to 2017, that nearly doubled. So the erosion was accelerating. So, you know, we got there. Good time, um, the park itself was losing real estate. Here's some pictures. Um, you can see that, you know, they've had to close off, <clears throat> excuse me, at this park and at others, um, and at Chip Oaks and some other similar places, you know, I've noted, but at York River State Park in particular, they've had to close off areas because of trees uh, falling off the, off the tops of the embankments. Some more. Talk about sequence of construction. Sure. Um, so the next few slides just kind of break down some of the, the proposed improvements. Um, so first we had uh, grading down at construction access uh, down the bank um, with a small staging area back up in the uplands. Well, part uplands, it turned out there's a small wetland up there as well. All her basis, no, no tree cover. Um, so we have uh, that being used uh, for staging on mats, um, being restored afterward. Down along the beach, uh, a series of uh, rock breakwater structures um, are being built with sand fill back behind them um, uh, to create the, the new beach. And then uh, grading back of the bank um, and trying to uh, balance the cut fill a little bit to reduce how far back we're going. So in green, you can see where we're actually having fill along the toe um, with uh, up in the upper sections that you see in the reddish color is where the cut would be. And uh, marsh plantings will uh, happen down uh, back behind the breakwater areas. So some of the typical uh, elevations and armor stone sizing for the breakwaters. The planting plan includes, I mentioned the restoration up in the, the staging area. Um, uh, the, the pink color is just a, a general stabilization with native grasses on the, on the slopes. And then the yellow is uh, the low marsh plantings and then the dark, darker purple would be high marsh areas some of the plant species you see here. Uh, last couple slides, we have some updated photos. Um, uh, everything's under construction now. Um, these were, I think, taken over the last couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, these were the first two breakwaters that were, that were built. See where the sand fills coming in and these, are, this is the Recently, structure up on.
So not too, uh, we're not um, bombarding you with too much, but we're um, eager to see if you guys have any questions or anything else we can. I'm just sort of curious. Um, when the when the project's completed and all the stabilization is complete, does that mean you'll no longer be able to see all the different strata in the cliffs? Not in those particular spots, no, because we will be doing the cut fill balance, and you know it'll end up covered with vegetation. Well, I guess it needs to be done, but it was really interesting, you know, to go out there and you could just see all the layers of fossils and see how they changed over time, and you know, in the layers. In the beginning of my career, I was an archaeologist, and as a kid, I was fascinated with that kind of stuff. So I'm a little sad personally about that um, myself. So I I completely agree with you, but um, there are other places in the park where that's still going to um, be visible. Some of those places are less um, are less imminent uh, erosion happening. Sure. If you walk out down the steps to the beach, um, off to the left is the area where you see the strata the most and the most popular spot. That's not part of this project area. Um, so after talking with the park, we moved to the right. Like if you came out and went to the right, there's some areas there that aren't quite as visible, aren't quite as used by park guests, and those were the, the areas selected. It, uh, the BIMS report or some of your interpretation uh, given any reason why there was an accelerated erosion in that in the recent time periods? I haven't seen any statements from VIMS on, on the reason and we, we didn't um, speculate. I mean, there's a number of factors I think definitely could be contributing, but that's not something we've analyzed and determined with. Yeah. Warm conditions, condition of the beach, uh, more, more access, more boat traffic. Um, yeah, I mean, this is all speculation, but you know, as you lose some of the marsh areas, it opens up the banks to more uh, erosion. Uh, uh, as sea level rise come up, that also increases the erosion. Um, and then uh, whether or not there's been um, named storms within that time period can definitely <coughs> change things. I know Irene was during that time period. Um, so, th you know, having a couple hurricanes could really shift the, the, the rate of recession. I've had the benefit of, I go out there almost once a week for the last 40 years. <laughs> so I've been watching it and the project's sorely needed. I mean, I've been watching the, the shoreline disappear and um, I don't know, one observation I know I, I've seen is, you know, when we think of erosion, you know, some, you know, you may think, you know, every time there's a tidal cycle, you're, it, it eats away a little bit. And that's not really what happens there. It's after a northeaster, it, whenever there's a big northeaster, it can really cut into the bank. That's when it's really noticeable, the erosion. I remember one storm, I went out with Mr. Lindsay to issue emergency per permits along that stretch of the shoreline just above the park. And, and the cliffs had moved back 40 feet over like two tidal cycles from a big northeaster. Or that may have been a hurricane, but it's, you know, it's not a slow, steady erosion, but we get a strong northeaster and boy, it just, it just eats away at the cliffs. It, it, it's a little of both and definitely uh, it's, it's more obvious when that happens. Uh, and we're hoping that even in those situations, our breakwaters and the increased vegetation will have an effect of slowing that down. Um, it's not York, but uh, a different similar situation at Westmoreland State Park. There's a there's stuff there where one, one day it was one way and the next day the, there was a catastrophic failure and there wasn't even a storm. So, it, you know, it's a little... Every time a tree goes over on the top of the cliffs, it takes out a huge chunk of the, of the shoreline. So speaking of trees, you had quite a list there. Where, where are you planting the trees? Mostly um, the wetland restoration area where the staging area is. It's currently open. That's where the bulk of the, the woody species are going. Back. 
back into the, okay that section in the back correct I don't know if I okay. can go back This area here in orange is where most of the. Whitney, I was thinking it'd be counterproductive to put them in the other area. I mean, we know that the trees will. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate you coming out and providing us this presentation. Thank you. Please be in touch if you have any more questions. Thank you. That concludes matters of special privilege. A motion to adjourn. So moved. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, call to order the April 13th meeting of the James City County Chesapeake Bay Board. The responsibility of this board is to carry out locally the Commonwealth policy uh, to protect against and minimize pollution and deposition of sediments of wetlands, streams, and lakes in James City County, which are tri tributaries of the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, Mr. Wilson, can we have a roll call? Certainly. Mr. Rodley? Here. Mr. O'Brien? Here. Mr. Gusman? Here. Mr. Lukens? Here. Mr. Dunn? Here. Um, I was not uh, present at the last m meeting. Um, but at this point, are, do you gentlemen see any changes to the minutes or the minute, do the minutes accurately reflect? Um, no changes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And I believe Mr. Dunn will, will sign the minutes on behalf of the chairman, right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Our next order of business are public hearings. Um, the outline for tonight's public hearings will be a staff presentation followed by any questions or clarifications from the board. Then the chairman will open the public hearing. At that time, anybody wishing to speak may do so once called upon by the chair. All public speakers must state their name and address for the record. After everyone wishing to speak have done so, the public hearing will be closed and discussion among the board will start. Um, our first case is CBPA 22-0030, 100 Edgewood Lane. Uh, Ms. Benedict, will you make the staff presentation, please? Good afternoon, Chairman, members of the board. My name is Robin Benedict, Watershed Planner for James City County. I would like to let you all know that prior to uh, giving this presentation, we're doing it a little bit differently tonight, where we will be reading the staff report and going through the presentation at the same time. So again, this is CBPA 22-0030. Mr. James Sizemore, Dogwood Contracting LLC, has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception on behalf of Mr. Daniel Grove for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the construction of a 15-foot by 20-foot deck on property located at 100 Edgewood Lane within the Bow Spring subdivision in the Mill Creek watershed. Here you can barely see it, but Right there is the subject parcel outlined in blue, and again, the watershed is outlined in purple. The parcel was platted in 1957 prior to the adoption of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 1990. Here's aerial photography of the site, uh, the existing home and the proposed deck area. Topography at the site. The sanitary sewer lines shown in yellow and the resource protection area as it affects this site. The total lot size of this property is 0 0.45 acres of which 58% is located within the RPA. The applicant is proposing to construct a deck to the rear of the existing house equating to approximately 300 square feet of impacts to the landward 50 foot RPA. Required mitigation for this amount of impervious impacts to the RPA equals the planting of 12 shrubs. So again, um, the 100 foot resource protection area goes through the middle of the house, followed by the proposed deck to the rear of the existing house and the 50 foot resource protection area. Site photography, um, a little bit of explanation behind this. The, um, the owner started construction on this deck and the contractor realized that they were working without permits, at which point he came to James City County to receive a building permit 
and a Chesapeake Bay Preservation Waiver. Um, all work stopped at that point and has not begun until they have received both permits. Staff has evaluated the application and exception request for the construction of a deck. This application meets the ordinance conditions in sections 23-11 and 23-14 and should be heard by the board because the construction of a deck is considered accessory in nature. The board may grant exceptions to section 23-7 if the application meets the following five conditions. The exception request is the minimum necessary to afford relief. Granting the exception will not confer upon the applicants any special privileges denied by Chapter 23, Chesapeake Bay Preservation of the James City County Code to other property owners similarly situated in the vicinity. The exception request will be in harmony with the purpose and intent of Chapter 23 of the James City County Code and is not of substantial detriment to water quality. The exception request is not based on conditions or circumstances that are self-created or self-imposed nor does the request arise from conditions or circumstances either permitted or non-conforming that are related to adjacent parcels, and reasonable and appropriate conditions are imposed which will prevent the exception request from causing a degradation of water quality. Staff has reviewed the application and exception request and has determined the impacts associated with the proposal to be minor for the proposed development. Staff recommends approval for this exception request, and if the board wishes to approve this request, staff recommends the following conditions be incorporated into the approval. The applicant must obtain all other necessary federal, state, and local permits as required for the project, including a building permit if necessary. The submittal of a mitigation plan equating to 12 shrubs be submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division. A surety of $500 be submitted in a form acceptable to the James City County Attorney's Office to guarantee these mitigation plantings. This exception request approval shall become null and void if construction is not begun by April 13th, 2023, with written requests for an extension to the exception submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division no later than March 2nd, 2023, which is six weeks prior to the expiration date. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them at this time. Nope, I don't think there are any questions. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Would the applicant like to come forward and address the board? Hey, come on up and state your uh, name and address for the record. I don't, I don't have anything to add to that. Okay. Um, I have a question for you. How was how it that the... Uh, what, ha what happened that the uh, construction started before you had the permit? How did that happen? I hadn't happen? even met Mr. Grove until after the construction had started. So I don't, I don't know what happened leading up to that. Okay. But I, you're I, aware of the requirements for... Absolutely. Okay. Any other... Um, you know, one of the issues that we face when encroaching, even for minor encroachments into the RPA, is helping to address runoff sheet flow. It, it, were there any considerations for that in a post-construction condition? Are they doing anything that you're aware of to help with that issue? No, sir, not that I'm aware of. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else uh, like to speak on this issue? Um, okay, at this time, I'll uh, close the public hearing. Any discussion from the board? Mr. Chairman, I, I don't particularly have an issue here, um, but I would appreciate if staff, when in talking with the applicant, could help reinforce means or methods to help reduce sheet flow rill that might occur as a result of the construction of the deck. Certainly. Thank you. Any other comments, questions from the board? Okay, would someone like to make a motion? Can we have a roll call? Motion is to adopt the resolution. Mr. Roadley? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Lukens? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Gussman? Yes. Okay, motion carries the uh, exceptions granted. Thank you for coming out. Next case is CBPA 22-0029-162, Indigo Dam Road.
Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, again, um, my presentation will follow along the same guidelines uh, as Ms. Benedict's, uh, so I will read the staff report as we go through the presentation. Mr. Jonathan Beamer, uh, G Jonathan Beamer Builder, Inc., has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception on behalf of Mr. Jonathan and Ms. Donna Dulane for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the installation of a sanitary sewer trunk line on property located at 162 Indigo Dam Road within the Indigo Dam subdivision and the Mill Creek watershed. Uh, above on the vicinity map, you will see the parcel outlined here in blue and the um, Mill Creek watershed outlined here in purple. Uh, directly north of this property, uh, Route 199 um, runs uh, just adjacent. This parcel was platted in 1985 uh, prior to the adoption of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 1990. Um, some aerial photography of this property. Um, it is a triangularly shaped lot um, and there is multiple subdivisions just adjacent. Where the project location marker is, is about where the sanitary sewer trunk line will connect in um, across this. There is a dam embankment right here. And the topography of the lot, uh, it's certain, certainly flat in the majority of the areas and then slopes down um, drastically towards the resource protection area, um, which is outlined here in green. and the sanitary sewer here in yellow, and that is what they will be tying into. Total lot size of this property is 9.72 acres, of which 52% is located within the RPA. The applicants are proposing to install a sanitary sewer from the proposed house, equating to approximately 750 square feet of impacts to the landward foot RPA and 600 square feet of impacts to the seaward foot RPA. Required mitigation for this amount of impacts to the RPA equates to the planting of four planting units, which is four canopy trees, uh, eight understory trees, and 12 shrubs. On the site plan above, you will see the 100-foot resource protection area outlined here in the dotted red, and the area of impacts associated with the construction of the sanitary sewer trunk line here in yellow. Uh, staff has evaluated the application and exception requests for the installation of a sanitary sewer line. This application meets the ordinance conditions in sections 23-11 and 23-14 and should be heard by the board because the installation of a sanitary sewer is not water dependent and is proposed to be constructed within the RPA buffer. Some site photographs uh, for the board of the property looking, standing in the RPA looking uh, landward. Um, the proposed, they're hard to see, but there are flags here in the field um, kind of leading down towards uh, the area where they are going to tie in. Again, some more flags over here, um, taken from a side vantage point. And leading down towards, you can see the resource um, here is, is, a, is a marsh wetland. Um, that is that is the uh, body of water of which the RPA extends off of. And the dam embankment that I uh, mentioned earlier from a BMP on the other side. Or may grant exceptions to section 23-7 if the application meets the following five conditions. The exception request is the minimum necessary to afford relief. Granting the exception will not confer upon the applicants any special privileges denied by Chapter 23, Chesapeake Bay Preservation of the James City County Code to other property owners similarly situated in the vicinity. The exception request will be in harmony with the purpose and intent of Chapter 23 of the James City County Code and is not of substantial detriment to water quality. The exception request is not based on conditions or circumstances that are self-created or self-imposed, nor does the request arise from conditions or circumstances either permitted or non-conforming that are related to adjacent parcels, and that reasonable and appropriate conditions are imposed which will prevent the exception request from causing a degradation of water quality. Staff has reviewed the application and exception request and has determined the impacts associated with the proposal to be minor for the proposed development. 
Staff recommends approval for this exception request, and if the board wishes to approve this request, staff recommends the following conditions be incorporated into its approval. The applicant must obtain all of the necessary federal, state, and local permits as required for the project, including a building permit if necessary. The submittal of a mitigation plan equating to four planting units, four canopy trees, eight understory trees, and 12 shrubs be submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division. A surety of $2,000 be submitted in a form acceptable to the James City County Attorney's Office to guarantee the mitigation plantings. That this uh, exception request approval shall become null and void if construction has not begun by April 13th, 2023, and that written requests for an extension to an exception shall be submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division no later than March 2nd, 2023, just six weeks prior to the expiration date of this waiver request. Thank you very much, and I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Any questions? Would you mind going back to the picture that showed the resource? Yes. Is it, so it looks like that area was it's already clear. It's already cleared. And is that this the sewer right there? The it's fairly clear. I also uh, believe that this is access um, across the dam uh, for things like maintenance and other uh, JCSA related um, activities. Um, so yes, it is. It is fairly clear. And then just adjacent to that um, swath, uh, it is uh, wooded. I assume that this is this is their only way to get connected. I believe so. Um, I'll let the uh, the applicant answer if there's any other anything that I do not know about. But as far as I'm aware of, it is the only way. Thank you. So um, will will all of the uh, wastewater pipe be underground, aside from access points? Yes. Gravity fed. That I don't know. Um, I would I would think so, but I will uh, again let the contractor um, answer that indefinite. Okay, thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Would the uh, applicant uh, come forward and state their name for the record, name and address? Good evening. I'm Jonathan Beamer, and I am at one one thousand one Moy Road, Newport News, and. Um, you got any questions? I'd be glad to answer. <laughs> it is gravity fed. Yes. And then the that's the only you have to cross the RPA. The only yeah the only other way I don't have the picture with me would be to go the other side further through RPA and you'd have to bore underneath that that berm to get I don't know it's probably a thousand more feet away over, so yeah that's the closest area. <laughs> yeah, you can see as you see on the plan, um, you'd have to come to the down where it says sanitary sewer, and there's a big berm there. You'd have to come across all that RPA, bore through that berm, and, and or dig through the berm and go to the sanitary. Does the property get a lot of runoff off of uh, 199? I, I don't believe so because I think what you, you've got 199. You've got your Jed can probably answer a lot better. I can. Jonathan Delone, <laughs> uh, 1412 Jamestown Road, owner. Um, there is a ditch that runs right down alongside 199 and on some occasion there's there that ditch will fill up with water but it's only right when something's happening and it is it gets down there near the creek there's a there's a turn or a Y that comes in and that's where all that water goes where they built the dam okay so I'm just curious about the drainage thank yeah. you uh, just a, a question it's purely curiosity on my part um, I know the Mill Creek uh, Mill Creek Pond is just a little bit south of this. Um, is there an indigo dam there someplace? <laughs> I, I guess the, the actual, there's a spillway there, and I believe that's what they've always considered is the dam. So uh, James City County at some point has done a tremendous amount of work right in that area and right where I guess the dam is to to make their, you know, keep that water just from rushing back through there. So the BMP may have obscured the the dam site there or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you very much. Would anyone else like to speak on this issue? At this time, I'll close the public hearing. Any discussion from the board? Um, fairly minor encroachment. Okay. 
Uh, can we have a motion? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to adopt the resolution to grant the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board case CBPA 22 tax 0029 at 162 Indigo Dam Road. Hey, um, can we have a roll call, Mr. Wilson? Motion is to adopt the resolution. Mr. Roadley? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Lukens? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Gussman? Yes. Okay, our next case is CBPA 22-0028, 20 mile course. Uh, Mr. Long? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Trevor Long, uh, James County Watershed Planner, here represents CBPA 22-0028. Mr. Joseph Krallinger and Mr. Michael Matthews of the Structures Group have applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception on behalf of Mr. Lawrence and Ms. Penny Pulley for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the replacement and expansion of retaining walls on property located at 20 mile course within the Kings Mill subdivision and the College Creek watershed. Above on the vicinity map, again, you can see the parcel outlined here in blue and the watershed uh, delineator here in purple. Um, this subdivision is, uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, Kings Mill. Parcel was platted in 1974, prior to the adoption of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 1990. Here's an aerial photograph uh, of the property uh, further zoomed in, um, and the approximate, <coughs> excuse me, locations of the retaining walls that are proposed to be replaced and or uh, further constructed. The areas that the applicant proposes to replace are adjacent to the existing driveway. Some contours and topography for you. Um, it, the contours slope back towards the, uh, the pond that exists behind this property um, and the applicants are experiencing erosion um, based on uh, various various different reasons. Um, and the resource protection area as it affects this property as well. Total lot size of this property is 0 0.99 acres, of which 77% is located within the RPA. The applicant's proposing to remove the existing timber retaining walls and replace and expand with new block retaining wall sections of the existing, um, excuse me, Sections of the existing timber walls are beginning to, to fail, and it is for this reason that applicants are proposing to replace the walls with stone. Additionally, there is a terracing, terrace timber wall area that the applicants have agreed to remove, therefore uh, decreasing the amount of impervious surface from that area. Total impacts associated with this exception request equate to 769 square feet to the landward 50-foot RPA. Required mitigation for this amount of impervious impacts to the RPA equals the plantings of two canopy trees, four understory trees, and six shrubs. Above on the site plan, um, you can see the existing conditions here. Um, the retaining walls are located in this region, and this is the terrace section that I was talking about earlier um, that the applicants are proposing to remove. In red, you have here the 100-foot resource protection area, so it kind of Cuts, cuts halfway through the house in general. And above is the proposed retaining wall uh, solution. So again, the 100 foot resource protection area here in the dashed dotted line and the black area being the new retaining walls. Um, so the areas here will be replacements and the terracing, terracing effect um, coming out and beyond into the yard. Some site photographs, um, as you can see, this driveway is held up by the retaining walls. If you move to the other side of the driveway, you, you find a steep uh, drop off um, that is and where the timber walls are beginning to fail and you're starting to see cracks in the, the driveway and things like that. Right beyond this section of the driveway is where the terracing, uh, the existing terracing is um, located and proposed to be removed. Better photo of the terracing. And the new secondary retaining wall will come out in this general region. 
Looking backwards uh, at both the area of the new retaining wall and also the terrace section. Staff has evaluated the application and exception request for the construction of a retaining wall, um, construction and expansion. This application meets the ordinance conditions in sections 23-11 and 23-14 and should be heard by the board because the construction of a retaining wall is considered accessory in nature. The board may grant exceptions to sections, section 23-7 if the applicant meets the following five conditions. The exception request is the minimum necessary to afford relief. Granting the exception will not confer upon the applicants any special privileges denied by Chapter 23, Chesapeake Bay Preservation of the James City County Code, to other property owners similarly situated in the vicinity. The exception request will be in harmony with the purpose and intent of Chapter 23 of the James City County Code and is not a substantial detriment to water quality. The exception request is not based on conditions or circumstances that are neither uh, self-imposed or self-created nor does the request arise from conditions or circumstances either permitted or non-conforming that are related to adjacent parcels, and that reasonable and appropriate conditions are imposed which will prevent the exception request from causing a degradation of water quality. Staff has reviewed the application and exception request and has determined the impacts associated with the proposal to be minor for the proposed development. Staff recommends approval of this exception request, and if the board wishes to approve this request, Staff recommends the following five or the following conditions be incorporated into its approval. The applicants must obtain all other necessary federal, state, and local permits as required for the project, including a building permit if necessary. The planting of two canopy trees, four understory trees, and six shrubs. A surety of $1,000 be submitted in a form acceptable to the James City County Attorney's Office to guarantee the mitigation plantings. That this exception request approval shall become null and void if construction has not begun by April 13th, 2023, and that written requests for an extension to this exception shall be submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division no later than March 2nd, 2023, which is six weeks prior to the expiration date of this permit. Thank you very much, and I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Any questions for staff? Um, I understand the failure that's occurring. Is there active erosion that's occurring also in addition to the structural failure? Just curious. None that I um, recall or can see in the, the site photographs. Um, however, um, if there is any, I will let the, uh, the applicants uh, speak to that issue. The, the timber walls are being replaced with a stone retaining wall. Yes, sir. But what's the addition of the impervious uh, structure? So coming back here to the site photo, or sorry, the site plan. Mm -hmm. So this area um, adjacent to the driveway is the replacement of the retaining walls. Um, and then the areas that are extending outwards are the new um, areas of uh, impervious surface. Any other questions for staff? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Would the applicant like to come forward and address the board? Chairman, members of the board, my name is Michael Matthews. I reside at 104 South Point Drive in Williamsburg, and I'm president and CEO of the Structures Group. And if you'll oblige me, I'd like to introduce Joe Crowlinger, who's an engineer with our firm. This is his first time before the board. Welcome. And I thought it would be appropriate. And I think Joe can handle this. This is a good opportunity for him. All right. Does the board have any questions? Are you Bob's son? I am Bob's son. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, any specific questions about it? Is it just the... It's just an age issue? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, it's age deterioration. It's starting to rot and deteriorate. I'm surprised it wasn't made out of stone originally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll find that there's a lot of timber retaining walls out there. So so if I'm interpreting the plans correctly, the actual the patio is at a lower elevation than the that, that curved or arched wall is going to be at a lower <laughs> elevation 
Yes, in that's the driveway. correct. It's a lower terrace level. Keeping the garden uh, section between the two retaining walls. Um, yes, 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 and that's, so that's going to be part of our our plantings that are required. One of the items, since this is your first time in front of the board, one of the at least my hot button items is drainage from the new impervious. I noticed there were some drains in the existing driveway. Where do they go? So we're going to send the drainage into our lower terrace wall so it's treated by the lower terrace. Perfect. And then from there, we poles to an energy dissipator so we mitigate erosion concerns. The base Very the good. Wall. Thank you. That sounds like a sound approach. Any other questions? I've got one that's kind of random, but just is the wall just uh, bolded the way it's, the way it's depicted, or is that true to size relative to the house? Because it just looks like it's true to size. Oh, okay. It's a gravity retaining wall, so it's large. It's almost like Lego blocks. Okay. So it's just going to be a drywall, just yes. That's help. Nice. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. When Anyone else like to speak on this issue? At this time, I'll close the public hearing. Any discussion from the board? Chairman, there seem to have obvious structural failure, and they've you know addressed the concerns over runoff, so I believe uh, overall it's a fairly decent project. Okay. Uh, does someone want to make a motion? Make a motion to adopt the resolution to grant the exception <coughs> for Chesapeake Bay Board case CBPA 22-0028 at 20 mile course. Can we have a roll call? Motion is to adopt Mr. Roadley. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Mr. Lukens. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Mr. Gusman. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, you have the exception. Thank you. Uh, our Final uh, public hearing for tonight is CBPA 22-0021-8072 Fairmont uh, Drive. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Robin Benedict, watershed planner for James City County. Mr. Jimmy Stringer, Home Turf Landscapes, has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception on behalf of Mr. Paulo and Ms. Marcella Delgado for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the installation of a pool, patio, and two retaining walls on property located at 8072 Fairmont Drive within the Windsor Ridge subdivision and the Ware Creek watershed. On the vicinity map, you can see the subject parcel outlined in blue and the watershed outlined in purple. The parcel was platted in 2014 after the changes in the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 2004. Here is aerial photography of the project location, topography uh, at the site, sloping downwards, the resource protection area, which encompasses the majority of the house at this lot. The total lot size of this property is 0.43 acres, of which 50% is located within the RPA. The applicants are proposing to install an in-ground pool with a patio and two retaining walls to the rear of the existing house. Total impacts to the RPA associated with this proposal equate to 223 square feet of impacts to the landward 50-foot RPA and 615 square feet of impacts to the seaward 50-foot RPA. Required mitigation for this amount of impervious impacts equals the planting of two planting units, which is two canopy trees, four understory trees, and six shrubs. The applicant has already submitted a mitigation plan equating to four canopy trees, eight understory trees, and 18 shrubs, therefore exceeding county mitigation requirements. So here on the site plan, excuse me, you can see the 50-foot resource protection area, the proposed pool and patio, and then the, the two proposed retaining walls around said pool. This is the proposed mitigation plan. Again, this is uh, four canopy trees, eight understory trees, and 18 shrubs exceeding county requirements. Here's site photography of the backyard um, showing an existing patio and then where it will connect to the pool patio. Looking back up the yard and from the other side. 
Staff has evaluated the application and exception request for the construction of a pool, patio, and two retaining walls. This application meets the ordinance conditions in sections 23-11 and 23-14 and should be heard by the board because the construction of a pool, patio, and retaining wall is considered accessory in nature. The board may grant exceptions to section 23-7 if the application meets the following five conditions. The exception request is the minimum necessary to afford relief. Granting the exception will not confer upon the applicants any special privileges denied by Chapter 23, Chesapeake Bay Preservation of the James City County Code to other property owners similarly situated in the vicinity. The exception request will be in harmony with the purpose and intent of Chapter 23 of the James City County Code and is not of substantial detriment to water quality. The exception request is not based on conditions or circumstances that are self-created or self-imposed, nor does the request arise from conditions or circumstances, either permitted or non-conforming, that are related to adjacent parcels, and reasonable and appropriate conditions are imposed which will prevent the exception request from causing a degradation of water quality. Staff has reviewed the application and exception request and has determined the impacts associated with the proposal to be moderate for the proposed development. Staff recommends approval for this exception request, and if the board wishes to approve this request, staff recommends the following conditions be incorporated into the approval. The applicants must obtain all other necessary federal, state, and local permits as required for the project, including a building permit, erosion and sediment control plan, and a land disturbing permit if necessary. The planting of four canopy trees, eight understory trees, and 18 shrubs. A surety of $2,500 be submitted in a form acceptable to the James City County Attorney's Office to guarantee these mitigation plantings. This exception request approval shall become null and void if construction has not begun by April 13th, 2023, with a written request for an extension to an exception submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division no later than March 2nd, 2023, which is six weeks prior to the expiration date. Thank you. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them at this time. Went a little bit too fast for me in the, the diagram. Can, can you go back and show um, where the two RPA lines are and, and, uh, and, and how the pool fits into this? Sure. So on this site plan, um, the 100-foot RPA is, is far up here into the house, so it does not fit on this particular diagram. Um, but the 50-foot RPA is the red dashed line. Um, and then the two retaining walls uh, going to the side and the, the top and around the pool and patio. Okay. So the bulk of this is, is in the, the, the uh, seaward uh, RPA. Yes, sir. Um, do you have a diagram of the, showing the house and the lot? Is there any other place to locate the, where the pool could be located? Um, unfortunately, because of how far, pardon me, the RPA comes up into the house, it, it appears it's pulled as close to the house as it can be. Um. Okay. <laughs> Where, where, where would the, where's the hundred foot? Where would approximately the hundred foot line run on this? It goes um, basically through the front of the house, following my cursor, um, scooping across. The house was built um, before the hundred foot it was established, right? Um, I don't know when the house was built, but the parcel was platted in 2014. Mr. O'Brien, I can address that uh, for you. The subdivision uh, was grandfathered when the uh, revisions came into effect for uh, 2004. That's why the house itself uh, got an administrative exception into the RPA buffer. The house doesn't um, infringe on the... 50 foot RPA. That is correct, sir. If it had been uh, in, encroaching into the 50 foot uh, seaward 50 foot buffer, it would have come before this board for approval. Mike, the, the limits of clearing, I guess, when this was approved, it, it, it appears to you know approximate the property line. Um, I mean, it, it makes it more difficult now because of the 
perceived usable area of their backyard. When the uh, construction of this house was done, um, the division policies and procedures were a lot different uh, than they are now. We have tightened those up um, and the clearing limits, uh, would this come under construction today, would have been tightened up on the plot plan. Uh, you are correct in your observation. Um, further, and I don't know if this was specific to this lot, part of this property uh, had been an agricultural field. Thank you. Show the uh, the plan again. The we have basically two two drain areas for the patio, in roughly in opposite corners there. Yes. On one side and in the corner. If, uh, would these be the the sinks for the case where the the pool itself has to be drained? Um, I do not know that, but I can get back to you. I didn't quite catch. Is is this is this pervious or uh, or or an impervious surface around the pool? Uh, it is uh, impervious all around. It's a lot of square footage. Can. Uh, is it possible possible to have uh, this kind of area have a, a pervious uh, surface? I know that's sort of a technical question. Can anyone in the staff answer that? Would it be possible to have something that you know uh, where the water could drain it, you know one into the tile? Mr. Gusman, that is a uh, a design consideration that the homeowner could make. Uh, staff, in a case uh, such as this, would not require or force that um, uh, pervious pavement uh, option onto them. If the board wanted to make that a requirement, uh, certainly that's within your purview. That's a pretty large uh, deck around it um, um, what, what what's that dimension uh, on the the left side how, how many how many feet is that to the retaining wall on the left where the stairs are from the edge of the pool over um, I do not have that measurement um, in front of me um, it's something that I can get back to you though a scale a quarter inch per foot uh, yes. So that's probably 12 feet. It's about 12 feet. Recall what the the house guttering looks like where where that water goes. Um, I um, from these photos, I can't tell very well. Um, and I, I do not remember off the top of my head. Kind of looks like there's no, no special handling of the water that maybe is coming off the roof. But at, at, at this stage, it doesn't look like there's any particular erosion impact. For I would agree uh, during the site visit, we didn't see any, um, any signs of erosion or any big issues on the property, um, but also no, um, no erosion controls in place. Any other questions for the staff? Okay, thank you. At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing and would the applicant like to come forward and address the board? Okay, and just say your name and your and the address for the record. Marcela Delgado, and I'm at 8072 Fairmont Drive. Okay. 
Do, do you have an engineer design this? Um, we are working with uh, earth landscaping, I think. My husband is not here. He just sent me here. He got something to do from work, and I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll come. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I really don't have a clue. Okay. He just sent me here. Okay. It was last minute stuff that he came out, and he had to go. He went to Maryland from work, so I'm like. Um. So we um, take any recommendation if we have to do any modifications. Um, we are willing to do that. Any questions for the applicant? I think that the part of the issue we're wrestling with is, one, the amount of encroachment into the buffer area. Um, what are we doing with the runoff that is eventually going to come off of these impervious surfaces? Um, you have a fairly stable slope currently. Um, looking back at, at aerials, it looks like this property was cleared between 2005 and 2007 of trees. So at the time of development, there were no trees on the lot per se, or at least very few. Because um, we try and preserve the three trophic levels of the canopy, the understory, and the ground level to help filter uh, runoff as it goes through the buffer. Um, so when we look at encroachment into the buffer, we're trying to, if we can't replicate the, the three plant levels, then can we do an engineering solution to help minimize that runoff. So I think that's kind of where we are is trying to understand how we can further minimize that runoff to allow you to build what you're proposing. And I think I'm not going to speak for the other board members. Are there other opportunities to reduce footprint further, thereby reducing that runoff? So I'm sort of curious, could could you maybe shrink the patio area around the pool a little bit, maybe not have such a wide buffer? Or is there a way of, if you're going to make the patio, can, you, can it be made so it's not all sealed and, and the rainwater can soak into the ground and not just run off? So we just have to talk to our... Um the person who did the uh, design for us, mm -hmm. so to see what he can come up with, something, your recommendations, and right. then we will take it from there. Um, if you will, if you your request uh, an extension, we can put this off can to next the next meeting, and and uh, the staff hears our concerns and. Maybe the engineer can talk to the staff and he can further explain to them, you know, what our concerns are and maybe come up with a little bit better plan. Okay. So would you like to request that yes, an please. extension on this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how do we handle this now? So we're not we're not going to make a decision tonight. The engineer can talk in this next month to the staff, and they can go over. They can discuss maybe some ways of minimizing the impact, and come up with maybe some come up with some changes to the plan okay. next month, and then we would vote on it. Okay. Uh, do we, um, do we have, we don't have to vote on that. Okay. I just make one, one comment, uh, to have the engineer or somebody that can explain the, the plan for the next, next meeting would be helpful. Okay. I'll let them know. Yes. If the engineer could come in, in case we have some questions about what he's proposing, that would be helpful. I thought they would want to be here. Okay. Um. Um, thank you, thank you for coming in, and 
Uh, any other questions for the applicant? Thank you for, for coming in. Would anyone else like to speak on this? At this, I'm, I'm going to continue the public hearing and we will continue with this case at, at, next, at, the me, at our next meeting, which I believe is next month. Yes. It's May 11th. Okay. I'll All right. Make sure he's Thank you. Um, that concludes our public hearings for tonight. Um, we have uh, one uh, matter of um, special privilege. Um, uh, as you've noticed, Mr. Apperson, a- Mr. Chair, if I may interrupt, we also do have a couple of board considerations as well. Oh, that's um, right. Oh, let me do the board considerations first. Um, we have our first board consideration, the CBPA 21-0060, 4373 Landfall Drive. Mr. Chairman, members of, members of the board, Robin Benedict, Watership Planner, to speak Bay, or, I'm sorry, James City County. Uh, Mr. Ricky Edgerton, Edgerton Contracting, is requesting a one-year extension to CBPA 21-0060, originally granted on May 12th, 2021. Staff concurs with this request with the stipulation that all permit conditions, except for the expiration date, be reauthorized and that the new date of expiration be April 13th, 2023. Any questions for the staff? Uh, would someone like to make a motion? Motion to adopt the resolution to extend the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board case CBPA 21-0060 at 437. Three Landfall Drive. Uh, can we have a vote on that? Motion is to adopt. Mr. Roadley? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Lukens? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Gusman? Yes. Motion carries. Next one is CBPA 19 0037 499 Jolly Pond Drive, a sanitary sewer. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Trevor Long, Watershed Planner. Mr. Ryan Stevenson, AES Consulting Engineers, on behalf of Colonial Heritage LLC, is requesting a one-year extension to CBPA 19-0037, originally granted on May 8, 2019. Staff concurs with this uh, request with the stipulation that all permit conditions, except for the expiration date, be reauthorized and that the new date of expiration be April 13, 2023. I just want to make the board aware this is the third extension request for this project. Marshall? Yes, sir. It, it's residential. Oh, sorry. A oh. Residential of a neighborhood. Part of Colonial Heritage, yes. Mr. O'Brien. <laughs> I misunderstood. Yes, yeah, so there it's uh, the construction of the expansion of uh, Colonial Heritage. It's real close to Cranston Mill Pond. So yes, sir. Okay. Well, yeah, I have a lot of problems with, you know, a third extension, but I don't know. This last, last two years have been really screwy with uh, the COVID and delays in construction and, and, you know, and delays in getting workers. So I'm inclined, to, you know, to grant a third exception, extension for this one. Uh, can we have a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to adopt the resolution to extend the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board case CBPA 19 tax 0037 at 499 Jolly Pond. We have a vote. Motion is to adopt. Mr. Roadley? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Lukens? Yes. Mr. Ha uh, Dunn? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Gusman? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, the last uh, consideration is uh, CBPA 21-0045 for 4055 South Riverside Drive. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Robin Benedict, Watership Planner. Ms. Catherine Woolham is requesting a one-year extension to CBPA 21-0045, originally granted on April 14th, 2021. Staff concurs with this request with the stipulation that all permit conditions, except for the expiration date, be reauthorized and that the new date of expiration be April 13th, 2023. Hey. Mr. Chairman, is there, I know we've extended permits or we put a, a standard extension of three or permit term of three years when it's associated with a, like a VMRC permit, but 
Is there a reason, are we held to one year in, we are? Yes, sir. Um, it's in the uh, Chesapeake Bay ordinance that um, foundations must be started within 12 months of the exception being granted or the approval being granted. Um, because, I, okay, I, I appreciate that. These permits are one small piece of a very complicated puzzle in terms of getting something to construction. So I'm more than willing to grant an exception or an extension when people have to deal with all the other permitting that's involved, especially on a commercial property, but yeah. Um, does someone want to make a motion on this? Motion to adopt the resolution to extend the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board case CPPA 21-0045 at uh, 4055 South Riverside Drive. Roll call. Motion to adopt. Mr. Rodley? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Lukens? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Gusman? Yes. Motion carries. That concludes our board considerations. Uh, we have one matter of special uh, privilege, and that is a, um, a re resolution of appreciation to, uh, to Mr. Apperson for all his many fine years of work on, the, on these boards. We will sorely miss him. He was a, a wealth of information about uh, events that happened in the county. He knew, <laughs> knew this county in greater detail than I think anybody else. And his extensive knowledge on the, the flora of the county has just been really invaluable. Uh, uh, to, to staff to everyone, if uh, he could really tell us whether something was going to grow or not grow. And that was great advice uh, and great expertise to have on this board. So let me read the, uh, let me read the resolution uh, into the record. Resolution of appreciation for service to the James City County Wetlands Board and Chesapeake Bay Board. Mr. William Apperson, whereas Mr. Apperson served the citizens of James City County on the Wetlands Board and the Chesapeake Bay Board continuously from February 2007 to 2022. And whereas Mr. Apperson served the citizens of James City County as chairman of the Wetlands Board continuously from May 2020 to February 2022, and whereas incalculable hours of voluntary service were given by Mr. Apperson and his high qualifications to handle many challenges were invaluable to the successful betterment of the county's resource, natural resources, and whereas the Wetlands Board and Chesapeake Bay Board will feel a great loss of one whose ability and personal qualities have meant so much in the protection of the county's natural resource. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Wetlands Board and the Chesapeake Bay Board of James City County extend congratulations to Mr. Apperson on his leadership that has given the county the stature it now enjoys and its sincere appreciation for services as a Wetlands Board member and as a Chesapeake Bay Board member and hopes that the coming years bring good health, happiness, and a full share of those things that make this world a better place in which to live. Be it further resolved that this resolution be entered into the minutes of the Wetlands Board and that a copy be presented to uh, Mr. William Apperson. And it's signed by uh, Mr. Dunn and myself and uh, by Mr. Long, the secretary. And Billy, if you're watching this, uh, we all really want to give you a heartfelt thanks for all your service. Thank you. Um, that concludes the meeting. Can we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. We are adjourned. <laughs>